is Offbeat, a podcast that helps you to transform your career aspirations into reality. With your host, Adnan Sohail. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Offbeat Show. Today's world is very much connected through social media. We are having different kind of social media. Today we are going to talk about the one which is labeled as a professional social media which is a LinkedIn. Over 575 million people are registered user of LinkedIn, which they use it for different purposes. Someone to find out a job, someone to find out their potential clients or buyers. And at the same time, companies are having LinkedIn opportunity to showcase what they are and what they can offer in the industry. This episode is very much particularly focused on one angle and that is how to utilize LinkedIn in order to search the job. With the passage of time, the things are changing and this is exactly we are going to speak with our today's speaker, Natalie Cooper. She's an experienced recruiter living here in Dubai since last eight years. She's an experienced HR consultant. She has worked mainly in the legal industry, but very much equipped with the knowledge and having all the understanding of the trends, how the job and recruitment industry is changing over the period of time. I believe by end of this video, you will be able to learn LinkedIn in order to crack your next job. So let's move to our speaker of today. Thank you very much, Natalie, for joining me. Thank you, Mohammed, for having me here today. Um, I do hope your audience will benefit from some tricks and um, also improve um, by the end of the session on a couple of easy steps. Um, as we're going to be discussing LinkedIn, I think it would be useful to give your audience perhaps a real life example. The reason why I'm here today, um, obviously because you kindly invited me to do so, but it's also because of LinkedIn. Um, I regularly post and you do as well. We have uh, probably connected about four years ago uh, and we enjoy reading each other's news. Um, however, most recently you probably picked up on one of the articles that I did and decided to uh, make a session for a YouTube video. Um, without LinkedIn, neither of us would be here, neither of us would be talking about LinkedIn. So uh, this is how real life connection are also made and it's also important to do so, meet in person and engage further, not just online as well. Just give us a little bit of background that how the job process has changed or evolved in the last, let's say, five to ten years. Because of course there was a time when we were growing up and the way was that we were picking up the newspaper every weekend and seeing that what is there advertised. So how the job search process has changed in the last five, six years? Um, that's a great question. So we've moved from um, basically emailing CVs uh, to hiring managers and recruiters to uh, as a job seeker directly applying online. Uh, with uh, filtering systems such as ATS mm -hmm. uh, through to recently, and it's uh, becoming a little bit more available, um, the digital resume aspect mm -hmm. where you're going to have on top of the ATS, you're going to have another layer which is going to require you to tape a video of yourself in order to answer some set questions that are then analyzed by AI. What is personal branding? A lot of people talk about, and especially when we talk or sit with the uh, recruiters, they say that personal branding is something which matter a lot. Can you tell us? I'm still sort of learning about personal branding as well, um, but I do believe that as a recruiter um, or simply as a job seeker is really important. And the reason is this, we hire people, not CVs. Mm. Um, so personal branding on LinkedIn would be um, having your profile there, but what is required is your presence on LinkedIn. Mm. So it's how you interact with the members, with the user, your first connection or um, articles that are being written, how you comment, what you like. Um, personal branding is about what is there um, that your CV might not tell me about you, um, but that you would like me to know about you. Um, it's also about representing your employer uh, in a manner that is going to be um, obviously positive if mm -hmm. you're doing a lot with your employer. So say you're going on a professional development course, mm -hmm. uh, you're having a seminar, you're having a team bonding experience. Mm -hmm. um, that's great. Post all of that if you fancy and if you want to expand your personal branding. And the reason behind it is that it shows that you're a team player. It shows that you're not learning of, you know, you're not afraid of learning new skills. Sure. Um, and it shows that your employer is great because they're, you know, helping you to develop mm -hmm. in your career. So um, it's a two-in-one kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, having said that, personal branding in this part of the world, in, in the Emirates, sometimes is seen by um, HR department as 
something of a worry. Mm-hmm. Because if employee keeps on um, keep on um, posting things about the company, um, will it be beneficial? Are they going to be poached by mm-hmm. other employer, etc.? Mm-hmm. I really truly believe that if you treat your employee right at the end of the day, they won't be running from you. Right, 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 <laughs> so right. it's something like um, I, I trust that Richard Branson nailed it when he actually say train your people so that they can leave, but treat them right so that they stay. Exactly. And I think it really is the bottom line of that. So should employer fear the aspect of personal branding and stop their employee from using it? Certainly not in my views. Yeah. I think it is all to the benefit of the current employer mm-hmm. to actually Uh, have their employee talk about the firm. Um, is it necessary as a job seeker to have a sort of sample or portfolio uh, of what you do? Um, personal branding point of view, probably yes. Yeah. Especially if you work in digital media, marketing, um, business development, I think it's really important that you have something ready um, and something else to show for than just your LinkedIn profile. Now, when I want to compare LinkedIn Of course, it's becoming vital with every passage of day in order to search the job or search potential clients. So let's focus on the job search, but when we compare LinkedIn with the other channels to find out the job, including the traditional CV writing. So what weightage do you give? And I'm, I'm talking like how the employers or recruiters they see. Are they having more focus to search people through LinkedIn or still they are more focused on getting traditional CVs. LinkedIn has changed um, a lot of how we recruit these days. And LinkedIn carries a weight versus other perhaps database and mm-hmm. there are many reasons. One of them is that their filters for HR manager and recruiter are quite easy to use to be fair. Um, and according to the geographical area where you know you can narrow it down by that and it's very broad mm-hmm. you can literally be in Dubai and go and find someone in Asia say Singapore um, and further afield as well you could go all the way to Australia New mm-hmm. Zealand and few actually offer that option right. um, and if they do offer that option few has got as much of a big database as LinkedIn would have right. so um, yes it is probably from a business point of view, one of the biggest one to use and it's going to keep growing. Amazing. Is it enough that someone will go on LinkedIn, uh, create account and leave it there? Or there is, some, there is some criteria of seeing an ideal profile on LinkedIn? Right. Yeah, there's a lot of us. I mean, a lot of us, uh, and I, I don't fall into those category, but there are a lot of people, a lot of job seekers, or simply a lot of profile that are just inactive. They're just there just for the sake of being there. A bit like at first when Facebook started many years ago and you weren't too sure which way forward. Yeah. Um, and I think that's a shame because there's a lot to be done on LinkedIn, even if you're not looking for a job. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can interact with your industry by joining groups. You can uh, join a conversation that you might never think of joining because someone within your entourage has posted something which right. is of interest. Mm-hmm. Um, so yes, you can, but those people are called your passive candidate effectively, right. um, as well as anything else. They're just there to sort of be seen somehow, but they're not too sure right. why they should be there. They just sort of jumped on the train, but not really sure how to uh, keep going forward. Right. Maybe they don't need it at the stage, but um, everybody should learn something. So I truly believe that being there, not using it to the full potential is a mm-hmm. bit of a, a downside. Have you got your LinkedIn profile? If you have got it, just let us know that how that is performing. Are you really getting interest of recruiter or potential employer They approach you? Have you completed all the sections of the LinkedIn? And if you did not, then keep on watching this video because you're going to listen and you're going to learn it everything here. I would add to this and say LinkedIn is very well organized. So when you do your profile, um, there are certain steps that you need to follow. And out of that, um, the ultimate profile is the all star. That means you've mm-hmm. covered the seven sections that they ask you to cover uh, and you have done it in an appropriate manner. Mm-hmm. And they, it's quite simple, so you just need to literally follow the guidelines right. <laughs> on how to do this. But you need to take some time to do that. And if you're in doubt, well, I would say look at other people profile with a similar industry as you. Don't copy, make right. it your own, um, but see what others have done and yeah, get an idea of what, how you can better improve your profile. Tell us that someone has got the CV. 
which is actually with a lot of focus, someone prepared it. Now, should they copy paste all the content of CV into a LinkedIn profile or there should be something different? How it should be presented? What skills person has? I would advise against that. Don't make your um, CV uh, exactly um, the same on your profile. Mm -hmm. um, the idea is that use the opportunity for LinkedIn profile to tell us some things that, uh, about yourself that you know you couldn't put on your CV. Mm -hmm. um, so, and it should all should be, from my point of view, it should also be um, slightly um, more of a description, but an achievement based. It right. makes it a lot more interesting. Basically, as a recruiter or HR um, department, I think it gets really boring if it's a direct reflection of a copy of your CV. Mm -hmm. So try and avoid that. I think it's true that the different sections on LinkedIn, uh, some people are very much good to put their title on the heading line and that's it. The bottom sections are not that much well constructed. So we are having a lot of section and I believe that a lot of sections are even there people even don't know like the volunteers, like the skills, all right? So if you can just walk us through the different sections starting from the top that how it should look like in an ideal world. Start with the first section, you're going to have your name. Um, now, funnily enough for your name, make sure your name is what you are called because I have a lot of the time, uh, ladies especially, when you get married, uh, you don't automatically put your married name and if we meet at a network and your card is given to me and I try to search for your name and your name is different, I'm not going to find you. I'm sorry. <laughs> so you've got to make sure that you put the name that you really want to be found with. Um, also, the important of that is that your name is linked to your URL. Uh, which is basically, uh, well, if you do it well, it's your personalized one. If you don't, then you have certain name plus number that is automatically given to you. But that's a great way, if you personalize it, to be found as well. Um, and so that's the first part. So go back a step. So your name should be very clear and your full name, ideally. Um, there is a possibility to add a um, photo, and I strongly suggest you do. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, profiles that have a photo are most likely to be found and looked at further than those that don't. Mm -hmm. um, you have a banner possibility as well, so it comes with an automatic blue uh, generated banner, but you can change that if you want to make mm -hmm. it more personal. Does it carry any weight? I find it engaging personally, mm -hmm. but I'm very visual, so I enjoy it. Um, comes next, below your name should be your title. Now, this is a title, people. This isn't about looking for a new opportunity or open to jobs or help me scenario. Mm -hmm. This is your title. And why this is important, when we go and search for talent, we will automatically key in the title that we're looking for. If you don't have that, you will not appear. Mm -hmm. You're most unlikely to appear. You right. will appear somewhere else, down at the bottom of the pile. Right. So the title should definitely be something important to write. Somebody is the story, like someone can impress other people instead of going throughout. So what is the ideal or more appealing story or somebody on, on about section of LinkedIn? There are many different ways of actually explaining um, what you bring and who you are under the about or the summary section. Um, I think it should really not be a descriptive of what you can do as a task sort of thing. It should literally be about you, uh, how you are as a person um, from a working point of view, from mm -hmm. the professional that you are, um, what you like, um, what you're good at, what's your expertise, what's your niche, mm -hmm. and try and keep it simple uh, and don't make it too long at all. Uh, it's counterproductive and just something that would be almost your elevator pitch effectively something that's going to make me want to connect with you get to know you um, and that's the idea behind it there is one section that's about skills uh, some people are having a couple of two three four skills some are not having at all why adding skills is important on LinkedIn and what kind of skills people can add there I would say keep it again simple somehow so minimum of three um, five is average and I would say how many more you wish to add is up to you 
Um, I believe skills is the part that can be, um, you can ask for endorsement of your skill to your connections. Mm -hmm. So people that have worked with you, either former line manager uh, or even current people working with you, your current colleagues, uh, they can vouch for, the, the, for you that you have those skills and they've um, witnessed them. Right. And that's a nice way to say that, you know, what you portray on LinkedIn is actually who you are and what you do. Now tell us about the experience section, uh, what that looked like. Already you have told it's not going to be a replica of CV and I know that recruiters love to see more achievements there. So if you can describe that if a person is having multiple jobs, what he should describe under those job titles. And keep it simple. So if you have a long uh, experience, working experience, I would say concentrate on the last seven years and perhaps for those seven years of experience, make sure you give perhaps a little bit more information. Um, if you go further down, anything above 10, I would say simply put the name of the company, the title, and not much more. Right. Because whatever title you had and whatever task you did, you have acquired them technically. So mm -hmm. you don't really need to go um, into detail with regard to that. Um, make it as achievement based as you can, but there's a separate section further down mm -hmm. on LinkedIn to allow you to do so. So um, you can explain what you've achieved. However, if you receive certain things later on in terms of achievement, you can mention it further down as well. Two sections, which uh, again, I will say that when we go through the profile of people, uh, either sometimes they, they, those are overlooked or people do not put any efforts to complete that. One is recommendation and second one is about volunteering. Mm -hmm. What is importance of that? And really tell us from the point of view of a recruiter that do recruiter watch that sections? As a recruiter, I take um, time to actually look at both of those. Okay. And the reason is this, um, if you're a recent graduate, you haven't got a lot of work experience, but you have volunteered continuously for over a period of several weeks, months, whatever it was, um, it shows that you are obviously able to interact within a team, be part mm -hmm. of something bigger, that you enjoy certain things, and I think it brings a certain weight. Right. Um, so yes, definitely. If you're a job seeker uh, and you're currently in a job, then it just shows that you would like to give back to community mm -hmm. and that's great. And if you are a job seeker um, <laughs> and you are actively looking for a role, uh, it just shows that you're not wasting your time and you are, despite whatever hardship you might be facing, you are also giving back to community. And I think that's got a lot to say about the character, about who you are as a person, right. that no matter what you do, you are still willing to help others. And I think that's great. As for recommendation, mm -hmm. um, I like to see recommendation coming from different um, from different aspects. So it could be from your line manager, it could be from your colleague, it could be from your former uh, perhaps mentor, uh, from a, um, a course that you've done mm -hmm. and you really click with the teacher. It could be from anyone, as long as it's professional and that that recommendation carries certain weight and puts you in the light of someone that you know, is approachable, can learn new things, is great team, etc. cetera, um, you should definitely have it. One other thing about recommendation though is, if someone gives you a recommendation, I would say hold off by giving one back to them because it almost then looks like a favor right. and that doesn't automatically work in the same way right. and carries the same weight. I right. mean, despite the fact it could be true um, and it could work well, I still think it's better to just agree to receive recommendation and give to some people that haven't already recommended you. What are the mistakes which recruiters immediately can see that when they go through the profile of someone? I'm sure that people make mistakes. Yeah. I'm gonna talk about you know the intentional mistake. You are no longer working for an employer. Uh, it has been more than three or six months and you keep on posting that you're still there. Um, that generally doesn't really play well in the mm. long run. Mm -hmm. At first, when you're first, if say you're being made redundant and you know, you, you're you obviously um, looking for a new role, um, say for the first month or two or three, it's acceptable. Beyond that, I would say then write something else because mm -hmm. in the long run, it doesn't serve you. Right. And right. the employer might get upset as well. So. Right. When we talk about the settings, I know that there are a lot of backend settings in LinkedIn, uh, which can make someone more searchable or not searchable, open for opportunities or not open for opportunities. Uh, can you give us a quick things that what kind of settings people should make? A very simple one. On settings, as opposed to 
other social media such as Facebook, Instagram, etc., you want to keep things private. Mm -hmm. When it comes to LinkedIn, you want to be visible. So make sure that you're visible to all members. It's simple. It's so much easier. Um, so um, now in terms of searchability and being found, etc., well, that I'm afraid is down to a lot about how your profile is worded, but also the algorithm, how often you are present on LinkedIn. Right. If you're actively looking for a job, um, do not put obviously looking for a new opportunity as a header or just a subtitle under your first section, but go and click the button uh, looking um, basically open um, for opportunities. And you shall find that under view my profile, <laughs> I believe, mm -hmm. um, and go into settings and let recruiter know you're open. Right. Um, now what that does is um, when we then look at say your profile, it will allow us to see that automatically you are open. Um, and it would also, LinkedIn has got your back, so don't worry about your em current employer if you're still in a job. They technically, if it's um, done properly, LinkedIn makes sure that they will not see it. Mm. However, if they have LinkedIn recruiter, they might. So it's not guaranteed, but nonetheless, um, there are steps taken by LinkedIn so that your own employer should not be able to access that. Um, but you could equally leave it there and it doesn't matter if your employer sees it at the end of the day. Right. Um, you could have left it there for a while right. and justify it that way. Surely the purpose of LinkedIn is not just to create the profile and now sit back and see that when the miracle is going to happen. I'm sure that uh, getting connected with the people, expanding your network and then approaching to the recruiters are those connections which you have created. What is the effective professional way without being pushy, making people annoyed uh, how to approach that network and connections that if they can help you out? There are several ways. I mean, one of the things as a recruiter that I've had some great approaches and I've had some really not so great ones. Um, the one that I would um, say the right way to approach someone um, is to either, if you're, let's put it this way, if you're in a group um, and you want to access certain company and you see someone might be commenting from the company you're trying to access, mm. try and engage with them. So reply to perhaps the comment they made. That's a nice way forward. You can have a private conversation within the group. Mm. Um, so that's always a nice way to bypass a certain amount of email issues if you have the basic account or yeah. Um, a good way forward. How to approach a recruiter or a hiring manager where we get a lot of approaches on a weekly basis. So make sure that you really sincerely research who we are before you approach us because despite the fact that I'm a recruiter, I will not be able to represent you um, if you are not within the industry that I work in. It will be a waste of my time and a waste of your time. So do the research. It's a little bit time consuming but so necessary. It shows you're prepared. It shows that you have actually put in some effort into the recruitment process. Um, and even though I might not be able to help you if you approach me in the right way, which means with an introduction, um, then I would generally take time to say, hey, I might not be the right person, but I believe that you could look at this company mm. um, and I might just uh, you know, take a couple of minutes of my time right. to actually send you in the right direction if I can. Right. So how important is it? I would say from a recruiter point of view, very important that you use it wisely and right. properly when you try to approach people. LinkedIn gives you different account options like you can have a paid account or you can have, as you mentioned, basic account or maybe as a recruiter account. For the job seeker, getting a career or a paid account, uh, does it make any difference in that job hunt process or not? It depends. I think a lot of it depends. I mean, of course, I would think um, if you're really actively job seeking and you're at a level in your career where you've had, say, over perhaps 10 years and, you know, you're in, at a level financially to be able to afford perhaps that premium account, mm -hmm. then by all means do it because it does. It is better and it is easier and right. you get a lot more statistics that come with that account. Sure. However, if you are just starting and you're not too sure what you should do about it and you cannot simply afford it, then basic will do. Mm -hmm. um, the differences are mainly with regard to um, in-mail. Um, you can, with a basic account, you can receive as many email as you, as people want mm. to send you, but you cannot send any. Right. You have to pay for email. With the basic account as well, you have limited commercial use. So if you're searching for something at one point or another, if you've done too many searches, you're going to be stopped. 
Um, so it really depends what you need. Is the premium worth it, worth the investment? I would say yes, um, because that gives you a statistic about um, you know, who's looked at your profile, for example. With a basic account, you've only got the five last people that have looked at your profile. Mm. With a premium account, you got the last, I think, in 90 days or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so whoever looked at you, um, you, know, you would be able to see. Mm. What that does is it's not like a... It carries the weight in the sense that if you see that a person who's looked at your profile could be of interest to you from a development point of view, a career, a mentor, or mm -hmm. simply a future employer, then obviously you would want to connect with them immediately and say, mm -hmm. hey, I see that you've had a look at my profile, we have so-and-so in common, um, can I add you to my at work? For example, a simple way forward to engage. Right. Or um, you know, you could say, Another way forward would be, um, hey, I see that we share, we're part of the same group in, right. um, you know, I really enjoyed what you did and what you wrote, right. that kind of thing. And that's a nice way, professionally speaking, to engage, I feel. They say that content is king. So this is a term which in marketing people use a lot uh, in order to focus that what should be the quality of content in order to produce and bring it in front of people. And of course, like when you are having a social media access, whether it's the Facebook or it's LinkedIn, especially I'm talking about the LinkedIn, what kind of content people are, especially I'm, again, with the point of view of uh, the job seeker, they can post there, which is going to make them more employable. It can help them to build their personal brand. Content is king. So mm -hmm. uh, how you decide to engage uh, is obviously up to you. You could either uh, write a, uh, an article yourself mm -hmm or you could actually promote somebody else's article because you really enjoy it and it's relevant to your industry. Yeah. Yeah. That has two uh, different metrics for that. Um, and that would lead to uh, your social selling index um, to increase the more you engage, the more it increases. Mm -hmm. Um, there are several aspects that fall pillar to that, and it's actually, um, you know, some debate that it's it's um, a vanity metrics um, and not a tool to be used, etc. I personally think it carries a certain weight. It shows that you are engaging with the community, you are helping, you are being appreciated, mm -hmm. and you're basically active. Right. Um, and um, I would say, from an employee point of view, I think it's good to be active. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> you right. would want to engage people that are, uh, you know, obviously uh, communicating with their peers, right. uh, engaging in seminars and events, continually uh, developing their skills. Mm -hmm. um, by the way, LinkedIn do that as well. They offer you a possibility to further develop with uh, right. um, uh, videos that they make with, um, you know, slide shares and, mm -hmm. and all of that. And I think it's really valid. So. Um, yes, content is king. Yes, you should use it, um, and uh, but make it worthwhile. Don't post anything which is pet related, or you know, keep it business and keep it professional. Yeah. I would add one more thing. Yeah. If I had a magic wand mm -hmm. and I could actually have one wish granted somehow <laughs> on the LinkedIn <laughs> scene, yeah. it would be for people to stop hammering the newsfeed of uh, reposting jobs continuously. And there's a reason for that. Obviously, I'm a recruiter, so I'm biased. But I think if you really want to help someone, post according to the person directly mm -hmm. in a direct message. Right. Because sharing it with the whole world would just clog, and I'm thinking of a recruiter briefly, would just literally add up to the pile of already CVs that the person is going to be receiving. Sure. And in a way, it's counterproductive. Because if you are receiving 1,500 applications mm -hmm. for this one little things that you mentioned, you're not meant to do it that way, you're meant to do a proper job advert, but that's another matter. Right. A lot of people don't. So, you know, you will never go through the 1,500 CVs, no right. matter what you do. And if you haven't got an ATS in place, mm -hmm. it's just gonna be a headache for whoever is on the other receiving end of those um, email. The intentions are right, and right. the intentions are to help each other to find a role, and right. I totally get that. But I would say, it doesn't always carry the weight you think it does. Right. And also, it's kind of makes it, I guess, the company that's posting that way look less professional. Mm -hmm. What you should really do is you go on LinkedIn as an employer, you pay for the advert, and you post that advert. Mm. There's the link, and you know, people then have two ways forward. You either apply through Easy Apply LinkedIn, or you're being sent to the website of uh, whoever posted the job, right. employee-wise.
Right, Natalie, we already started to talk that uh, what people should post and what they should not post. Uh, my question is that how people can maintain their professional image on LinkedIn when they are searching the job, but in the same time when they are already in the job. So in the both situation, how to manage and uh, maintain professional image on LinkedIn? Well, it starts with actually their photo. So the photo on LinkedIn should actually be professional. Doesn't mean to say that you have to be wearing a suit and tie or, um, but business attire in general. Um, and so that's the start to maintain somehow some degree of professionalism mm -hmm. and keep that throughout. So when you, if you're looking for a job, um, avoid certain common mistake um, such as posting or reposting you know job advertised in the wrong way on LinkedIn mm. that doesn't carry anything and it doesn't help you funnily enough it really doesn't mm. um, however if you're in a job and you want to keep on being professional post what you do within the the role that you're doing the team uh, building that you're doing the continual um, sort of professional development um, post the seminars you attend, post uh, anything you participate to, any speaker event that you're participating in. I think that um, is a really helpful way. Also post anything that you are an expert in. What is your niche? Post something industry related. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to create it if it's too much time consuming and you're working long hours, but you can definitely comment on certain articles that you are aware of and that your industry might not already know and might be interested of that's a nice way forward and 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 keep learning use LinkedIn they have learning solution that are really really good keep learning um, they sometimes give you badges for doing so as well mm -hmm. which is really nice you can post them you can add them to your achievements uh, yeah just keep going keep developing that's the idea behind it. I think that would uh, make you look uh, engaged and professional. Thank you so much. You contributed really a lot uh, by giving your time and all the information and these tips from the angle of the recruiter. But uh, can you overall tell our audience that uh, what piece of advice you want to give them? Um, well, first of all, I hope you find a job really soon. <laughs> <laughs> um, and second of all, I would say, um, concentrate on roles that you feel you will really truly add something to. Don't apply uh, continuously without really thinking twice. When I hear job seekers are applying to a hundred or so uh, roles per say even week, I would say or month, uh, it's counterproductive. You're not doing the right thing. Um, and the frustration of not getting a reply, well, I would put it back on you. It could be because you didn't really target the right either recruiter or the right role um, or the right level. Um, it could also be because your profile might need a little bit of tweaking and you might want to consider uh, looking at perhaps other uh, competitors uh, for, to see what they're doing uh, and see whether you can adjust your profile to your industry. Never copy, always be authentic, but just overall. Um, you could equally, if you've got a basic account, try and upgrade to premium on LinkedIn. Um, by the way, I'm not, you know, I have no uh, benefits in, in promoting LinkedIn, but I really think that there's a value in that. Um, and it helps you to see more statistics, it shows you how you compare to others, how many skills you've got compared to other applicants, etc. I think that can also play um, a role. Um, of course, it's always ideal um, to have your CV professionally reviewed. Mm -hmm. um, if you can afford um, um, having someone do it for you, then that's great. But having said that, um, it has to be, you have to own the information. You have to know uh, when that is done that you totally agree and feel comfortable with it because at some stage or another, you're going to be facing a recruiter, a hiring manager. If what is written both on your CV and your profile and what we're hearing um, are different things, truth of the matter is we won't put you forward. So it has to match somewhere down the line. Right. So, and best of luck. Keep going. You're going to get there. Guys, I believe that you have learned a lot of things from this today's session. Uh, we must appreciate the time of all of our speakers and especially Natalie who given us time today to talk about LinkedIn. Uh, as in the beginning, we talked that LinkedIn is a social media, but you have to be very much careful that how you are going to use it. It's professional, it is labeled professional, so you have to keep its usage more professional to search the job and in order to reach to your potential clients or potential employers. We wish you all the best in the journey of hunting job. 
Till next week, goodbye. Thanks for watching this episode. If you like our content, please subscribe to our channel. Press the bell icon for regular updates.